Want to know a way of simulating your hair curves in Blender? This is Lise. I made a groom for her using the new hair system. It has multiple systems, all using different modifiers and settings. I wanted to simulate all of them at once, using only easy nodes. To get to the point quickly, the method I used relies on using cloth simulation on a proxy mesh to deform the curves. I made some simple node trees that you can get for free with the link in the description. A bit of manual work is needed to get them to work though. I'll show you how to make them, what they do, and how to get the simulation working on the curves. To keep the demonstration short, I will only remake a proxy for one hair system. Before doing anything, make sure you're happy with your groom and are done with it. If you need to modify it later on, you'll have to either update or redo the proxy completely. One, first thing first, we need to resample the curves with a resample strand node because the point count and indexes are crucial with this method. This is the resample strand node group which is the built-in resample curve node but ready to go. Plugging the point count input of the node to the group input will allow you to choose the point count directly in the modifiers tab. Create or add your resample node, choose your point count and hit apply. 2. Duplicate your hair system and add a proxy suffix to its name. Delete all modifiers and convert it to a mesh. The strands of the resulting mesh should have the exact same point count and index as their corresponding curve strands. Go back to your hair system. We'll add a follow proxy node right below the surface to form. It has to be above anything else. This is the follow proxy node group. The object info node is used to reference the proxy. Its object input is plugged into the group input, so you can directly pick the proxy mesh as the object in the modifiers tab. The node is plugged into a sample index node. The sample index node set to vector with a position and an index node plugged in will retrieve the position and index of all vertices in the proxy. Last is a set position node. The sample index is plugged into the position input while the original hair system's geometry is plugged in the geometry input. From what I understand, it will look at the curve points indexes. Look for matching indexes in the proxy and glue each curve points to their corresponding proxy vertex. 3. Let's go back to the proxy. Let's create a roots group. If you only have a few strands like in my example, you can select the roots by hand. Otherwise, you can use a create root group node. This is the create root group node. It will temporarily reconvert your proxy to curves with the mesh to curves node. The endpoint selection node, which only works with curves, needs to have its first input set to 1 and the other set to zero. It will retrieve the first point of each strand. Plugged into a capture attribute node, it will save the information. The curve to mesh node will make sure your strands become a mesh once more. Now, with the value output of the capture attribute node plugged into the group output, you can name the attribute in the modifiers tab. Name it roots and hit apply. Go in the properties tab. In the attribute panel, you'll find a roots attribute. Click on the little arrow next to it. Choose convert. Select Vertex Group. Your attribute will now appear as a Vertex Group. Duplicate this group. Name it Pin. 4. For collisions to work, we'll need actual geometry, not just points. In the 3D viewport, change the transform orientations to normal. In Edit Mode, select all the strands that will need simulation. Extrude on the X-axis to create a thin plane. Depending on the hair and art style, you'll probably need more than just a pin at the root for the simulation. To quickly add more weights to the pin group, hop into weight paint mode. Grab the gradient tool and lower the strength. Give a few strokes, each shorter than the last, starting from the roots. It should give you a nice weight gradient along the strands. 6. Duplicate your proxy if you have multiple hair systems to simulate and change its suffix to cage. If you only have one hair system, you can keep working on the proxy mesh no need for a cage. You can now add cloth simulation to the cage or proxy. Select the pin group in the shape panel, up the collision quality a bit, and choose a small collision distance value. You'll find the ideal distance by trial and error. You can also enable self collisions if necessary. Personally, I won't. For the preset, I like to use cotton. Here are these collider settings and the wind effector settings as an example. For the wind to have a noticeable effect, don't hesitate to bump the value up in the field weight panel of the cloth simulation. And to get a better result, I like to add a smooth corrective modifier below the cloth simulation. Add the root group as the vertex group and invert it, so that the roots actually stick to the scalp. Be careful though, sometimes it causes clipping by smoothing out collision results too much. 
If you used a cage, add a surface deform modifier to the proxy mesh. If some strands don't require simulation, add them to a new vertex group, select it in the surface deform modifier, and invert it. Tick the sparse bind option. Finally, bind the proxy to the cage mesh. 7. If you only have one hair system, you're done. If not, you'll need to repeat these steps for all hair systems and join the cage meshes as a single mesh. For example, make proxy mesh, add follow proxy, create root and pin group, add geometry, weight paint, make cage mesh, and instead of adding cloth simulation to the new cage, select it, select the previous cage, and join them. You just need to make sure their vertex groups have corresponding names. Once you've created proxies for all hair systems and made the final combined cage, add surface to form modifier to all proxies and bind them to the cage. Remember to use a vertex group to exclude non-simulated strands when needed. And voila, that's done. Feel free to test and modify this method. The steps don't need to be followed in the exact same order. The nodes are super simple due to my lack of node experience and could be enhanced. There is a lot more that can be done. Tubes can be used instead of planes when simulating thick curls or braids. You can find example of that in the demo file on Gumroad. And you can also use armature, lattice, and all other deforming modifiers on the proxies and pages. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe.